You ready for an adventure? Let's go! 2023 on Disney Plus, it's going to be quite a year. New stories. This is just the beginning. Definitely. New faces. Peter Pan? Were you expecting someone else? And some familiar ones, too. Hang on. Like this handsome fellow. A little over the top, don't you think? There's only one place that's home to all of this and so much more. Disney Plus. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. We're burdened with glorious footage. There's a bunch of new trailer footage to break down from a couple different series. So there's Loki Season 2 footage, new footage from Secret Invasion, which is also coming at the beginning of next year, new footage of The Mandalorian Season 3, and from the Ahsoka series. If you're brand new to the channel, I'll be doing videos for all those series, just like I do for all the other Marvel Disney Plus series, Star Wars Disney Plus series. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. Starting with the Loki Season 2 trailer footage, some of the scenes are from the Season 2 trailer that they released at D23. They didn't make it public, but I did do like a full breakdown of all the footage in the longer trailer on my channel a couple months ago. In the first scene, you see Sylvie inside a classic vinyl record shop, like an old-timey 70s vinyl record shop, listening to music because she's hiding out in a 1970s-looking McDonald's in all these scenes, pretending like she's just a normal worker there. Loki winds up inadvertently finding her there at that McDonald's because he's also there chasing down a new Nexus event, which is related to some of the other footage that they included in this. Remember, Sylvie's whole thing is that she hides out inside Apocalypse-level events because the TVA can't track her there meaning something terrible might wind up happening at this McDonald's really soon, so RIP to all these other people here. But this is meant to play like their big reunion, like he wasn't here looking for her, he was here to stop a Nexus event and she just happened to be here. Like, oh wow, it's you. Remember when we killed Kang at the end of last season and freed all the different timelines and started the Kang multiverse war again? Yeah, that old chestnut. The second scenes are from Loki inside the TVA's cafeteria, or one of their many cafeterias, that's designed like a classic auto map, like a classic British auto map, because everything in the TVA has this very particular design style that makes it look old timey, even though technically nothing actually ages in the TVA because of the way that Kang controls the flow of time in there. Because we're talking about Loki, you may also remember that Deadpool 3 is going to feature the TVA and Mobius, some of the other TVA-related characters. I don't know that Loki himself will be in Deadpool 3, that'd be amazing, but the TVA is a big plot point because Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe, but they're doing it in a slightly different way. Deadpool kills the Fox Marvel Universe timeline. So basically, Mobius, the other TVA agents, wind up arresting Deadpool and Wolverine is along for that ride. Knew was a bad idea giving him Cable's time travel device. I know there's all kinds of theories about the TVA secretly being inside the quantum realm because of what's happening with Kang the Conqueror in the Ant-Man 3 Quantumania trailer, but that's not exactly what's going on. Now, he does use quantum energy to power all of his technology, so it's similar to what's happening in Ant-Man Quantumania. But the TVA is meant to exist sort of in its own little pocket dimension outside the main timeline, so that it's protected from changes to the timeline itself. That's why they had the whole joke about the Infinity Stones from different realities not working in the TVA. Like, oh, we just pass them around. They're just like paperweights. We keep them in this drawer here. Just a bunch of junk. Because the Infinity Stones only work inside their own realities. In the scene, he's talking to Mobius about their current predicament. It's meant to be a parallel for their scenes during Season 1 in that version of the TVA's lunchroom where they work through the problem of how to find Sylvie before they knew who or what Sylvie was. The next scene is of Loki in another new room in the TVA trying to explain something, being held at the mercy of some other attendant here, or like some other receptionist. And it's just meant to be a funny scene of him getting exasperated with someone who's not listening to him. Like the assistant in someone's office who just forces you to wait for some important meeting you're there for. The next much bigger scene is in the back alley of a special theater where they've come to stop a new Nexus event involving the Zaniac character from Marvel Comics. I've already done a longer video about this because we saw a bunch of footage from this and there's a whole bunch of Easter eggs for all the fake movies inside the Marvel Universe. But the reason why they're dressed in tuxedos that look like that all old timey is because this is taking place in the 1970s London. Like they actually go back in time to stop the Nexus event. And it's at this movie premiere at this London theater. And in the scene, you probably recognize Loki is using the same magic trick that he used in the first Avengers movie to duplicate himself with illusions. And Mobius is just making fun of him like, isn't this a bit much? You're like, you're being a bit showy. Even though that's totally Loki style to be super showy and over the top. Because the movie that's premiering here is the Zaniac movie, which itself is a comic book character. So it's like a reference within a reference within a reference. So it's a very meta episode because Zaniac himself is sort of like a parody on comic book characters inside the MCU. And at this particular movie theater, there's a bunch of those fake in-universe MCU movies that themselves are references to other real-life Marvel movies. 
I'll post a link in the description for my other longer video on that because there are a lot of Easter eggs in different parts of the scene that they didn't include in the trailer. Like Kingo's original movie is also playing at this movie theater because this is in the 1970s. Then they're in another new room revealing that Kay Kwan from Everything Everywhere All at Once is playing a brand new character. They actually brought him on stage during the D23 presentation like guess who we got? They said that he's playing a TVA archivist and the room they're in just seems like an archives room where they store really dangerous or really important items that they don't just outright destroy or send to the trash planet. And Loki makes an everything everywhere all at once reference. He says this is about everything during this scene while they cut this in the trailer. And in the last scene he's falling between buildings inside the TVA screaming the whole way down like business as usual for Loki same as it ever was. Seems like a disaster that he's totally failing at but somehow manages to pull off a win. There's a scene of him in another new room with someone from the TVA dressed in what looks like a very Kang themed outfit like something similar to what He Who Remains Kang was wearing at the end of season one. He also has some gold bands and purple robes. It seems like it's inspired by the Rama Tut outfit like something from ancient Egypt. And he destroys a painting on the wall depicting the timekeepers holding the sacred timeline in their hands like it's a wall painting depicting the Miss Minutes video that we saw at the beginning of season one. Loki uses one of the TVA weapons to remove it revealing behind the wall is this giant gold statue of Kang's face and it's kind of like the one above Renslayer's desk in the judges offices during season one. Except that was a wooden carving of the timekeepers faces but this time it's of Kang's face like he's trying to reveal the truth. Who is behind the timekeepers? It was Kang all along. Post all your Agatha memes. As they slowly zoom out on Kang's face you can also see this blue head that seems like it's been severed in the front here like it's meant to be a parallel for season one when they cut the head off of the timekeeper robots. And obviously lots of questions about what's happening with Kang the Conqueror during Loki season two because we're going to see a version of him during Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania. What I think they might wind up doing is explaining that it's actually the same version of Kang and part of what they've explained in Loki season two is that during the events of the series Kang isn't actually around controlling them the way that they think he is. Like in this version of the timeline the rebooted timeline all the agents know that Kang exists because you see a statue in the TBA. They think they're getting all their marching orders from him but at the end of season one when Loki shows up they're all confused. That might be because Kang got stuck in the quantum realm and because of the way time moves in the quantum realm. For them it seems like it just happened but when we see Kang during Ant-Man 3 quantum mania he will feel like he's been stuck there for eons. But they did say that Jonathan Majors will show up in Loki season two as a version of Kang just not in the way that you expect it. Like I said I think they'll try to tie this together and be like oh he wasn't around because he was stuck in the quantum realm. It just seems like it's been much longer for some people based on where you're living like if you're in the quantum realm it seems like it's been eons but if you're living outside the quantum realm it seems like it's only been a little while. The new secret invasion trailer footage is of Amelia Clark's character talking to Nick Fury about this evil faction of scrolls which they also show separately. Say that this is just the beginning like they're uncovering this big conspiracy that this evil faction of scrolls is trying to pull off trying to take over earth just like comic book secret invasion. There are rumors now that she's actually playing Talos's daughter and that's her connection to Nick Fury and Talos like why Talos would get involved. We also see the footage of Everett Ross helping Nick Fury but he's sneaking around because now he's a fugitive from the law because Okoye broke him out of federal custody at the end of the Black Panther Wakanda Forever movie which they also show footage of during this trailer. The reason why they had the Wakanda Forever footage in this is because the movie is coming to Disney Plus in 2023 like this is meant to be a Disney Plus trailer of all the big stuff coming at the beginning of the year. The whole idea during that movie is that Everett Ross was trying to help the Wakandans and Val wanted to arrest him because they're setting her up as this bigger villain like a dark version of Nick Fury who is now in charge of the CIA and using that power to just go rampant. That's part of a larger plot that's going to culminate in the Thunderbolts movie in Captain America 4 New World Order with Red Hulk. It sounds like they're actually going to introduce a version of the Sentry in the Thunderbolts movie or maybe even Squadron Supreme. And now that Henry Cavill is totally available like he got fired as Superman he's totally available to play a Marvel character. I don't actually think that he's going to wind up playing a dark version of Superman in a Marvel movie like Hyperion or even the Sentry. If he does show up in a Marvel movie he probably plays somebody completely different. They even have new footage of the Mandalorian season three trailer in here. There's supposed to be another new trailer coming next week like the week of Christmas as of me posting this video. Then they end things with the new Ahsoka trailer footage completely different series but set during the similar timeline of the Mandalorian five years plus after Return of the Jedi. It seems like in this footage Ahsoka has come to the ruins of an ancient Jedi temple and it's just part of her quest to find Ezra Bridger and Grand Admiral Thrawn. 
If you spotted any other Easter eggs in the brand new trailer footage from all the different series that they include in this, just write it below in the comments. Like I said, I will do more trailer videos for everything as we get more footage the next couple of weeks. We are supposed to get What If Season 2 episodes at the beginning of next year, but because we haven't seen a trailer yet, it might not premiere till like February. But it is coming, and speaking of Pedro Pascal, The Mandalorian Season 3, he's also starring as Joel in The Last of Us HBO episodes. I'll be doing videos for those episodes. We're also getting the little bear from Game of Thrones as a version of Ellie during that. There's a bunch of really big stuff coming up. Make sure you enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss anything. Everyone click here for the full Loki Season 2 trailer and click here for my Henry Cavill Warhammer trailer video and Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.